Today we will show you how to access and use the sonar settings for your StrikerCast. For this video, we will be using a StrikerCast GPS and your compatible Android smartphone, but the process is similar for the StrikerCast for Apple devices. Please see the video in the link below. First, you will need to have your StrikerCast on and paired to your compatible Android smartphone. For help with pairing and setup, please see the link on screen. Select the menu button in the upper right corner to access the gain and range sonar settings. Gain allows you to adjust the level of detail and noise. Use the slider to increase or decrease the gain manually. Increase the gain to see more return information. This also increases noise and can make it more difficult to recognize actual returns. You can lower the gain to remove lower intensity returns and noise. Select Auto to allow the device to adjust the gain automatically. Use the slider to increase or decrease the range manually. Manually adjusting the range enables you to view a specified range, which can be useful for tracking a bottom that has large terrain changes, such as drop-offs or cliffs. The bottom will appear on the screen as long as it appears within the range you have set. Select Auto to allow the device to adjust the range. This keeps the bottom within the lower or outer third of the sonar screen. It can be useful for tracking a bottom that has minimal or moderate terrain changes. Next, select More Settings. We can change the view from Traditional to Flasher. The flasher shows sonar information on a circular depth scale indicating what is beneath the striker cast transducer. The flasher is organized as a ring that starts at the top and progresses clockwise. Depth is indicated by the scale inside the ring. Sonar information flashes on the ring when it is received at the depth indicated. The flasher colors indicate different strengths of the sonar return. The default color scheme follows a traditional sonar color palette in which yellow indicates the strongest return, orange indicates a strong return, red indicates a weaker return, blue indicates the weakest return, and white indicates no return. We can also adjust the frequency for both the traditional and flasher sonar modes. The 455 kHz setting uses a more narrow beam width and is better for rough sea conditions. Bottom definition and thermocline definition may be better when using a higher frequency. The 260 kHz setting uses a wider beam width, which covers a larger area and can allow you to see more targets, but also could generate more surface noise. Wider beam widths generate larger arches for fish target returns, making them ideal for locating fish. Wider beam widths also perform better in deep water because the lower frequency has better deep water penetration. They can also be used to search for structures such as brush piles. Scroll speed sets the rate at which the sonar scrolls from right to left. A higher scroll speed shows more detail, especially while moving or trolling. A lower scroll speed displays sonar information on the screen for a longer period of time. The A-scope setting displays a vertical flasher along the right side of the screen, showing the range to targets along a scale. Selecting the fish symbols will mark suspended targets for easier identification. The last option under Sonar Settings is Restore Sonar Defaults. This restores the factory default settings for the sonar view. Press back to return to the sonar view. Now, select Settings. Then select Units. Here we can change the unit of measurement for depth, temperature, distance, and position. 
And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please visit marinesupport.garmin.com.